Specialized lighting helps pilots find the airport and runways at night and assist with altitude control during landings. At towered airports, the lighting is usually controlled by the air traffic controllers. At non-towered airports, the lighting can be controlled by timers, photosensors, or by the pilots over the common traffic advisory frequency. Pilot-controlled lighting is activated by keying your microphone for a certain number of clicks within five seconds. The number of clicks determines the intensity of the lighting. Most pilot-controlled lighting will turn off after 15 minutes. Information on airport lighting is found on aviation charts and in the airport facility directory. Lighted civilian land airports have a rotating or flashing beacon that flashes alternately white and green. This beacon is usually installed at the top of a metal tower, on a hangar roof, or at most controlled airports on the top of the control tower. These beacons flash 24 to 30 times per minute and are aimed at an angle of 1 to 10 degrees above the horizon, so they are best seen when you are at a distance from the airport and may be difficult to see if directly overhead. Rotated beacons are illuminated dusk to dawn, and at controlled airports are often turned on in the daytime whenever the weather is not sufficient for visual navigation. Military airports flash two whites between each green, while seaplane airports flash alternating yellow and white. Heliports flash green, yellow, white. Runways with an instrument landing system, or ILS, also have approach lighting systems, or ALSs. There are many different configurations of lights used depending on the environment, but they generally consist of long rows of steady lights with lateral bars and sometimes include a central set of sequential flashing lights. This light system is designed to help a pilot rapidly transition from flying by their cockpit instruments to flying by outside visual references. The ALS helps the pilot identify the runway environment and orients him for the visual landing. Another light system that can be used is runway end identifier lights, or rails. This system consists of a pair of synchronized flashing lights on each side of the end of the runway and allows airports to provide rapid positive identification of the approach end of that particular runway. To assist pilots on their visual landing approach, especially at night or in poor visibility, VASI and PAPI lights can be installed alongside selected runways. These aids are usually set to show a three degree approach path, but at some airports with higher obstructions, the projected angle may be as steep as five degrees. VASI or visual approach slope indicator lights are installed alongside the runway both slightly before and slightly past the desired touchdown point. When above the desired approach path, the pilot sees white lights, and when below it, they see red. By keeping the near lights white and the far lights red, they know they are on glide path. PAPI, or Precision Approach Path Indicator Lights, work similar to VASI's, but with four lights installed in a single row, with each light angled slightly higher than the previous. Here, the task for the pilot is to keep the outboard lights white and the lights closest to the runway red. Four white lights would indicate that you are too high. Three whites and one red indicate that you are only slightly high. Two whites and two reds means that you are on the correct angle. As you can now guess, three reds and one white mean that you are slightly low, and four reds mean that you are too low. PAPIs are most commonly installed at larger airports with instrument approaches. Runway edge lighting consists of white lights mounted on short posts about every 90 to 180 feet along the runway edge. A row of end lights can be installed with split lenses, green facing the approach end to mark the beginning of the runway, or if approached from the opposite end would identify the end of the runway. Runway lights are classified as high, medium, or low intensity. Some airport runway light intensities are fixed, while at other airports the brightness can be changed by the controllers or pilots. On more sophisticated runways, yellow lights are used instead on the last 2,000 feet of the runway or half the runway length, whichever is less. This marks the caution zone for landings. 
Runway centerline lighting is flush mounted into the runway itself with lights about every 50 feet. White lights begin at the approach end, transitioning to alternating red and white lights when at 3,000 feet from the end of the runway, and then becoming all red lights for the last 1,000 feet of the runway. Alternating green and yellow leadoff lights can be installed to direct pilots to the taxiway exits. Taxiway lights are used to outline the edges of taxiways and are blue in color. Some airports may also install taxiway centerline lights, which are green in color. Just like runway centerline lights, these lights are embedded into the ground.